Hello, mechanics today. Super excited about this. I love mechanics. This is from International NXL A Level um, 2021 June uh, M2. Uh, and it is a moments question and I'm super looking forward to this because I love mechanics. Anyhow, uniform rod of length 8A and mass M. So straight away I can draw a line coming down like this. And this will be my mass multiplied by the gravitational force G and that's the weight of the rod and that will act in the center of the rod, so it'll be 4A on either side. I'll just remember that. Um, it's freely hinged, fixed at point A on a vertical wall, and one end of the light uh, string is attached to the rod at point B, okay, and we've got the distances, yes, that's fine, and then that is attached to C, that's a string, yes, so if it's a string, it means there must be tension, and I'll draw the tension like this, keeping the rod up, so force pushing, uh, the rod up and um, the rod rests in equilibrium in a vertical plane but yeah blah 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 and we've got this angle of 70 and it says find in terms of m and g the tension in the string okay right the first thing i'm going to do and the first thing i notice is that i need to find components of tension but there's no angle there so that's going to be a bit tricky uh, but what we do know is that we've got this 5A on either side of this triangle, making it isosceles. So that angle in there must be 180 minus 70 halved, which is 55. Uh, and this angle as well uh, will be 55 because it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, that's good. Now, what I'm going to do, and most of these questions follow a really distinct pattern. The first thing you do is you do moments. At, um, at A because A is the point where there are uh, forces that we don't quite know yet, the uh, reactional force from the wall and, and whatnot. And I'm just focusing on uh, the tension, so moments at A makes sense. Okay, so moments at A, I'm gonna go along here and that distance is 4A until I hit my first um, force. So I'll do 4A multiplied by the force which is perpendicular to that direction of me motion that I'm moving from A to here. So the perpendicular force would come out like this. Uh, let me just do that a bit better. It would come out like this. And I can find the component of the weight by doing a little right angle triangle in here. So what is this angle in here? I need to know the angle there. Well, I know that um, because this is an alternate angle, this is a Z that I'm making here, this angle in here is 70. Uh, and because the dotted line here is perpendicular to the rod, it means that this angle is 20 to add to make 90. Okay, so the component I'm interested in is this one coming out. This one is adjacent to that 20 degree angle. So therefore that is m g cosine 20 because it's adjacent to the 20 degree angle. So we use cosine. The one opposite, this one here, which we're not gonna use, that one would be sine. Okay, great. Um, so that is the, um, what, that's the anti-clockwise moment. And now the clockwise moment is going to be the tension. So these are gonna equal because it's in equilibrium. Okay, so how from A, again, going along this line, I get to here, I've traveled 5A. So that's the distance, and now I need to multiply that by the force, and again, it needs to be the perpendicular force. So I need to draw a dotted line coming up like this. Uh, okay, let's just uh, do that like that, and then a dotted line across to make a right angle. Okay, so these are gonna be my components of the tension. Okay, so um, this angle in here, well I know that's 55, so this one right here is 90 minus 55, which is 35. And the component of the tension that I'm interested in is, again, it's the one that's perpendicular to the rod, so it's this one here, which is adjacent to that 35 degree angle. So that would be the tension multiplied by cos 
35. Okay, great. So now what I can do is I can rearrange for uh, t. First off, I can divide by a on both sides. Uh, and rearranging this equation for t, it would give me 4mg cos 20 divided by um, 5 cos 35. Okay, and when I work that out on my calculator, that gives me a value of 0 0.918 mg. Lovely. Okay, so that is the tension. Okay, next it says find the magnitude of the force acting on the rod at A. Um, Oh, it says the, the magnitude of the force acting at A is lambda mg, where lambda is a constant. Find it, basically. Okay. So whenever we've got um, a reactional force happening at a, a uh, at a hinge point, what I like to do is I'll draw well one component going up. I'll call that R1, and then one component coming out. And because we're asked to find the magnitude, we need to find both of these two and then do some Pythagoras to find the actual total magnitude. Okay, once we've done moments at A, most likely what we'll do is we'll have to resolve vertically and we'll have to resolve horizontally. And that I think is exactly what we need to do here. Okay, so let's start by resolving vertically. So I've got R1 going up, and I've also got a component of the tension going straight up as well. Now let's try and find that component, because it's going to be different to the one which was perpendicular to the rod. This is what makes this question quite tricky. So I'm going to get rid of those components, and I'm going to try and find the component of the tension going vertically upwards. So if I go up like this, and then across like this, this is going to be my vertical and horizontal components of the tension. Now I need to work out what this angle is in here, um, and I can do it using alternate angles. So I've got this Z here, uh, so therefore that is 55 as well, because it's alternate with this angle up here, which is also 55. Okay, so that angle in there is 55. Um, and what do I need? I need the vertical component so that is going to be plus T, um, and again, this one here is uh, adjacent to that 55 degree angle, so that's going to be cos of 55. And that's going to equal the vertically down forces, um, which is just Mg. Okay, great. Um, so T, we know we've got a value for that in terms of Mg. So we can add that to, or we can subtract that from, from mg to get a value for r1. So that gives me r1 is equal to, when I do that, I get 0 0.47 lots of mg. Okay, next we can find r2. Well, r2 uh, is the uh, horizontal component, and the only other horizontal component is this one up here. Now that one is T sine 55, because 55 is pointing opposite to this one here. So this is sine for 55. So that one's T sine 55. Um, and again, we know what T is, so we can calculate that. And that gives me a value for R2 of uh, 0 0.75. Mg. Okay, great. So now what we need to do is we need to find the magnitude of that reactional force, and we do that by combining the two um, components. So I can write the magnitude of R is equal to the square root of 0 0.47 mg squared plus. 0 0.75 mg squared. Now the mg's are going to be squared um, and then we're going to 
add them together, and then we're going to square root. So we just need to focus on the coefficients of mg here. Uh, and when I do that, uh, so if I just ignore the mg's and just square the coefficients and then add them together and then square root, that is going to give me um, a, that's going to give me a value of where's my notes? Here it is, 0 0.8. Um, 9mg. Okay, and that's it. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.